All right, so this is the Masterclass Division Rank 10 Final Match. I've never made it this far before in the Masterclass Division. Um, I've seen a couple of YouTube videos of other people who've done it, but I haven't done it for myself. Um, I'm also really proud that I've done it making my own team. I haven't used kind of the typical Rain team, which has, you know, a Pokemon with the Drizzle ability, one with the Swift Swim, you know, Gastrodon, Latios in the back. You know, or a team that kind of revolves around an Eruption Typhlosion. Um, so I'm really proud of this team. Also, I'm proud of the fact that I haven't, like, been looking up these trainers to see what Pokemon they have, what moves they know. So I'm kind of just doing my best to play against the unknown. And uh, I've certainly had some losses. This hasn't been, like, this perfect streak. Um, progressing from rank 1 to rank 10, I've probably lost 6 or 7 times. Uh, and so I've had to start certain ranks over. Yeah, this should be it. There they are, the two blondies. You made it, Ash. I managed to meet my dad here and achieve one of the biggest goals of my life. How, though? What? You're like the rival name, whatever his name. I think in my game it's named Gary. I feel like he lost all the time. Like, all throughout the story, I beat him. He always lost to Team Galactic. He's just constantly taking L's, so I don't know how on earth he made it here. Hi Ash, well done getting this far. My son grew up so much since meeting you that I can hardly recognize him. I mean, surely by the hair, right? Tycoon Tower, I face you in battle with all my might and my son by my side. Alright, let's do it. Uh, so this team is a bit of a modified version of the one that I used when like leveling through the normal battle tower, not the master class. Um, I swapped out the Dragonite for Hitmontop because I felt it synergized with my team a bit better out a bit more utility as well um, and instead of running nine tails in the front to have that immediate drought effect I actually have it in the bag just to control the weather in case it's needed so I think I go solar beam into the Milotic here so imagine the Milotic will go for an ice beam into the executor should I actually just stall a turn and set up a light screen, that might work better. Also kind of want to see what they do. Uh, the Torterra might have a quick claw. Oh yeah, so the Milotic was an easy read. Torterra, what are you going to do though? Crunch, okay. Well now I know a bit of their moveset, so I'm pretty happy with that stall. Um... Let me actually set up... No, let me... Hmm. This is kind of tricky. Clefable should be able to tank an Ice Beam and a Bite. Neither of those are stab moves. So, just to make sure that I do, in fact, kill the Milotic when I do bring out Ninetales and use a Solar Beam on it, I want to go ahead and use Psychic on it now. Okay. Well played. So you're going to crunch now. Bulldoze. So it's going to hit both of my Pokemon. I can't imagine it doing too much damage though. It's only a 60 power move and... Yeah, my Executor straight up resist it and Clefable has a lot of good defense. Although the speed drop kind of sucks. Alright, screw it. Let's go. Let's go in for the kill here. See if it happens. I may lose Executor here, they may double into the Executor. Ooh, you outspeed it? How bad is that? Wait. How fast is, is this Milotic then? It's not a choice because it used Protect earlier. But this is a Chlorophyll Executor with max speed EVs, so it's not bulky, it's pretty offensive. That's interesting. Okay, so I lost the Executor, but it was worth the trade to get rid of the Milotic. Let's bring out Hitmontop for the Intimidate, and then to... Oh gosh, you're not on Heatran. 
Heatran and Zapdos have been incredibly common as I've been like progressing through the battle tower and I don't have easy answers for either of them. Um, I mean Hitmontop does have close combat so I'm definitely going to have to lean into that here. Let's see if I can take out the Torterra first. This is a choice spec Ninetales. It's timid nature but it has max special attack EVs um, and then it is a stab move and it is boosted in the harsh sunlight. Okay nice. So, do any of these Pokemon have Focus Sash? Snorlax. Dang, actually, I wish I had Clefable out here right now. Because I feel like Hitmontop is kind of my win condition right now. Oh man, I don't like this. Especially with the Executor dead, I can't really re I can't rely on like a Leech Seed stall. So I need to bring out Clef Fable and pray that my Hitmontop survives here. I don't know what all it'll outspeed. Okay, so apparently not that. I wasn't even trying to protect the Nine Tails, but I'm glad that worked out. Okay, that's good. So now it's a three v one. Things are looking good. Hopefully it's not a Belly Drum Snorlax with some kind of like weird priority move or some kind of barrier that gives it priority for a turn. Body Slam into the Clefable. Okay, yeah. That is totally fine with me. Also, the Snorlax is very slow. So let's go ahead and do this. And then I'm going, I'm going to... Do I want to go ahead and go for some chip damage? Because if it does manage to somehow one-hit KO the Hitmontop and survive this round, I don't really know that Ninetales is a great option to take it out. Maybe it is. I'm probably reading too much into it. I'm probably playing a bit too safe. It's probably fine. I'm going to go ahead and Thunder Wave, though. Ooh! Okay, maybe I should have gone for Dazzling Gleam. It's just, I think Snorlax has a lot of special defense, doesn't it? I know it has a ton of health. It has good attack as well. And I think one of its defenses are really good. I don't know if it's special defense or normal defense. I want to say it's special, though. Also, so it is restored health with the Mago Berry. Body Slam into Clefable, hopefully. No. Oof. Hey, that's kind of what I was worried about. I don't really like this. I think I'm still in a pretty good position. I think I'm still in a win, but not quite as safe as I was hoping. Okay, so obviously flamethrower with a stab move. And I'm definitely going to outspeed it, so I think I'm going to go for chip damage here. No, actually. Wait, is it going to use a rest? If, it, if it's going to use rest, I want to use Dazzling Gleam. If it's going to go on the offensive here, and if it's able to one-hit KO my Ninetales, I need to probably use Follow Me. That way my Ninetales survives another turn. Because I don't think... My Clefable cannot really do a lot of damage here. It's entirely a support Pokemon, and so... It's just, is it going to use Body Slam or is it going to use Rest? Let's hope that just with the Stab, Flamethrower, and the Dazzling Gleam... That I can take it out here. Because my Clefable will go first. Perfect. Alright. Dude, let's go, finally. Master Class Division Doubles Conquered. I get to really do singles. Um, darn it, I seriously still can't win. I always seem to lose right when it counts. It's bad enough letting my dad down, let alone the Tycoon Tower. Darn it. Bravo, Ash. I see you've nurtured your relationship with your Pokemon into an unbreakable bond. And son, hold your head up high. You've got absolutely nothing to be ashamed of. You had a grand adventure with a worthy rival. You made it all the way here as a father. Nothing can make me prouder. Let me thank you once more. If it's too much trouble, keep looking after Gary. Screw that. I do not like your son. I'm not going to look after him. Your adventure has just begun. What do you mean? This is like the final end game in BDSP. I don't know how my adventure has just begun. 
A burning sticker C. I do not care about stickers. Beaten all seven trainers for your seven win streak. We present you with 50 battle points. Commemorative ribbons. Sweet. Okay, so now I look here. Doubles. Rank 10. Yeah, so I was only even on a 28 win streak. So I think the last time I lost was in rank 7. Uh, but then I didn't get any losses in rank. So then I had to redo 7. And then I think I progressed through rank 8, 9, and 10 flawlessly. I think that's what happened. Uh, but if, yeah, if you look at my singles... Uh, nothing. I haven't even attempted singles yet. And then even like in the normal one, my singles have only gotten to 38 wins. So like, I'm not really good with singles. I feel like doubles is easier for me just because you can provide more type coverage. There's more survivability. I feel like with singles, you can really get steamrolled by like, you know, a gut star raptor with flame orb or something. Um, so I'm better at doubles, but I'm going to start working on singles. Uh, that's kind of the next thing I want to accomplish. So uh, this is my team. Well, here, it, let me just do this, actually. So, yeah, the Executor. Let's uh, bring out these stats. So, the move sets I think, were already shown in that battle, but it's a modest Executor with Chlorophyll, Focus Sash. The Fable was bold for the extra defense. Uh, magic card, Magic Guard. Honestly, it didn't see a ton of use. That's not true. It helped not take any burn damage, because my Fable certainly got burned quite a bit. I don't think I ever had an enemy try to use Leech Seed or anything like that. So Magic Guard definitely came in handy, but it wasn't as amazing as it sometimes is in competitive play. Uh, Drought. The Drought Ninetales with the Corefield Executor really was the offensive power of this team. Um, and the Choice Specs helped really boost up Ninetales' offensive abilities as well, because Ninetales, I mean, a special attack there, 261. Uh, so it's solid, right? But it's not the best. Um, and then him on top was kind of quirky. Uh, so I wanted to bring him as a support type, but also I wanted him to be able to be an offensive threat against normal types uh, and steel and ice. So I actually made him adamant. And uh, if you look at the EVs, they're actually max speed and attack, which I think is kind of weird. I think usually with him on top, you want to kind of lean into its strengths, which are its defenses. Um, and so it was able to still provide some support with Fake Out and Intimidate and Wide Guard. Um, but then its Close Combat Stab Move and Rock Slide uh, really helped out with... Uh, especially some of the Legendary Birds. There's, I saw so many Zapdos, it was insane. Uh, but also I saw the occasional Mole Trace or Articuno, and so Rock Slide would help out with those. Uh, I think that's about it, though. I'm going to make a Reddit post, and I'm going to have like an Excel sheet linking more specifics on kind of the strategy that I used. And... Um, more specific stats on all of these, but anyways, that's it. I'm so happy to finally have conquered the Battle Tower Masters Division, at least in doubles. Does it not show, like, on here? Just win streaks. Oh, okay. Um, well, I have a lot of play time in this game. I've only actually been doing the Battle Tower for the last probably... I probably spent maybe 50 to 60 hours trying to do the battle tower from like start to finish, like starting here in normals and then making my way up to the master class. Um, just because I kind of wanted to figure out my own team. You know, I didn't just want to use like some of those meta guide teams, um, which by all means are great. And if I'm ever wanting to farm more BP, then maybe I will make one of those like rain teams with like a, you know, a Pelipper, a Ludicolo, or a Kingdra, and then with like a Latios and Gastron on the back with Storm Drain. Because uh, I feel like those teams are probably really easy to use. It's just the same strategy every single fight. Um, so I might use that if I ever want to farm. Wait, that's not what I want to do. If I ever just want to farm BP, I might do that. Same thing with like the Explosion uh, Typhlosion. Sorry, Eruption Typhlosion. Uh, so I have 700 battle points. I already have a lot of this stuff. I've been getting a lot from trading away shinies and stuff. I have a, I have too much time spent in this game. Across all my different save files, I probably have like 800 hours spent in BDSP. Uh, so way too much time, but again, only probably the last 50, 60 hours have been me actually trying to do uh, the battle tower. 
Uh, but yeah, I'm just really, really proud of this team because, well, it was like my own. You know, I didn't get it off a guide. Whoops, this is not what I meant to do. Um, and I kind of just made it work for me. Um, not every single strategy, like, I didn't have the same strategy going forward into every match. I usually had to decide if I wanted to kind of stall out some Pokemon with a Protect and Light Screen and Leech Seed and stuff. Um, or if I wanted to immediately swap in the Ninetales so my Executor could be faster. Um, you know, the AI would usually kind of anticipate going first because my Executor, even though it has max speed EVs, still isn't really that fast. Um, and so it was kind of like a nice little surprise moment for the AI when all of a sudden I swapped in my Ninetales and Executor is now the fastest Pokemon on the field. Um, and then it being modest and with some good stab moves could uh, one-shot usually one of the Pokemon that were there. Um, and so I kind of just had to decide if I wanted to go that route or more defensive route, and this team really provided a lot of flexibility with offense and defensive capabilities, so I'm really happy about it. So that's it for this video. Uh, thanks for watching if you watched, and until the next one, bye.